Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Sustainable Finance Research Seminar this week. We have Silvia Dalla Fontana with us from the University of Lugano. She will present Venture Capital Financing of Green Innovations. And before we start, please keep your microphones muted unless you have a clarifying question in between. Then it's fine to unmute yourself and ask the question. For longer questions, please wait till the end. There will be a Q&A as well and we will record the session. And without further introduction, I would like to hand over to Sylvia. It's a pleasure to have you here. And we're looking forward to your presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, a lot Linda. And uh, thank you, uh, Linda and Julian, for organizing this seminar and for inviting me here. As I said, I've been following this seminar series since the very beginning. And uh, I found it great, and I'm very excited to be presenting my, my research project uh, here today. Okay, so let me start. Uh, today I'm gonna uh, talk about my uh, current research project on the venture capital financing of green innovations. So uh, more precisely, what I'm doing uh, in this paper is to use patent data to identify green innovations, so innovations that are uh, related to technologies that can help uh, mitigate and fight uh, climate change. Um, and I studied the, the financing of green startups, so that sometimes I will refer to as clean tech, uh, by venture capitalists. So uh, we know that there has been uh, huge growth in capital allocations to venture capitalists over the past years, and, and even more so like over recent years, um, we know that uh, venture capital and US venture capital in, in particular finance very important technological innovations over, over the years. So it has been successful uh, in history in financing important uh, technological revolutions. So these two things uh, combined with the fact that climate change is the, the technology challenge of our time, um, made my research question around what is the role that uh, venture capitalists can play uh, in the financing of uh, this type of, of innovation, of green innovations. So let me start by explaining a little bit. So I think I don't need to, uh, to spend too much time in explaining why it is important to, to study climate change and research in climate finance. I mean, if you're following this series, you probably uh, know it very well. Uh, let, me, let me spend a few time to, uh, to explain why is it important uh, that we look also at private markets, venture capitalists, uh, private equity uh, as well. It's out of the scope of my, my paper, but uh, the same considerations uh, work for both. Uh, so why are uh, VC and private equity funds important for impact? So I really like this graph uh, that is from the uh, from Professor Falipu's book, Private Equity Laid Bare, where it, it is pretty clear that uh, VCs are in a, are placed uh, where they can really have like a big potential for, for impact. So, you know, like, they they uh, they work on primary markets, and they really hold stakes of the companies that where they invest. They have control over these companies. So you know this is something that uh, is uh, uh, that 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 was shown in the literature of entrepreneurship that venture capitalists are more than just investors, more than just financiers providing capital. They really help startups uh, to to. To be successful because they can provide expertise, uh, they they provide monitoring, um, and so they 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 have a, a, a good position to uh, to to have impact in uh, in the in these early stage companies that might not be uh, that are somehow like small for what concerns uh, the size, but they are potentially important because they are like companies of of the future, right? Okay, um, so as I said, um, over the, the past years, there was like a, a, an increasing uh, amount of funds into venture capital, and as well as an increasing need, uh, as we know, 
for, uh, for green technologies. Okay, so on one side, uh, VCs can potentially be great or ideal financiers of this kind of technologies. As I said, private markets have historically been good at financing important technology cycles. And at the same time, we know, and we know it uh, particularly for, for, for public, uh, from the public markets, we know that there is growing demand from investors uh, to include climate change into their investment choices. So to this regard, I think uh, VCs uh, will be a uh, great candidate in the financing of these kind of innovations. At the same time, uh, there are reasons to believe that there are potential frictions in between uh, the the, these financiers and these kind of startups. So a couple of things that uh, can easily come up to, to, to your mind is that uh, clean tech innovation uh, might require longer horizons and it's a high capital intensive uh, type of innovation. So they need a very large financing and what is uh, referred to as patient capital. So, you know, uh, there are many of these innovations are concentrated around the energy sector, which requires large capital, and it requires long horizons really from the phase where you, where you create an innovation uh, and you patent it and you scale up, and that innovation is, uh, can be used and is pro profitable on, on large scales. At the same time, there are there can be frictions for what concern the risk profile of these startups. So, venture capitalists are are used in financing highly risky. Uh, I mean, they are in this business of financing uh, highly risky businesses. Um, but from the point of view of the the, the type of business that uh, clean tech offers, it's a little different from the typical startup. So, um, you know, usually startup create new markets. So you have like an idea, you invent something and you, you, uh, you create a market for it. When it comes to, to, to green innovations, uh, it's more about capturing a share of an existing market. So what, what we're talking about is more about um, providing alternative ways to do the same things we are doing. And, and, and very often these alternative ways are, are like even more costly. And so they're difficult to, it's difficult to even understand what would be like the ideal targeted customers of some of, some of these um, technologies. So just for example, uh, if you consider all these smaller funds might not be uh, good at financing this kind of innovation because if you have to, uh, put in a business a lot of money and you have a lockup period that, that is longer, then you might not have the sufficient capital to survive the energies, uh, th this long development cycle. Okay, so um, I think I, I concluded these slides with more doubts than answers. And this is gonna be, I think, like this until the end of the presentation, but, I, you know, I believe one way to, to, to understand and to gain insights uh, is to look at what happened until today. Uh, so we take the data, we look at the data we have, and we try to understand what's going on, what can be improved, and where we should we worry about. So for clean tech, uh, looking at the data is particularly interesting because we had a boom and bust cycle in the mid 2000s. So I will show you uh, in a minute, 2000, 2000, 2005, 2011, uh, this is the boom and bust cycle I'm, I'm referring to. Uh, so, you know, after the, the dot-com bubble uh, where venture capital is starting to, to step back from IT um, software investments um, and they, they were looking for, for a new market where to invest. At the same time, uh, there were increasing oil, uh, oil prices, and um, we started talking about climate change. And the, it was it started to become like understood that this was like a, a real challenge for the future. So venture capitalists invested a lot of money into uh, into clean tech. So they started investing uh, massively into into this uh, sector. 
but this didn't really end well, meaning that in 2011, this sort of bubble uh, went bust and they started to step back also from that kind of investments. Some firms failed. It wasn't really a, a successful uh, experience. Um, so, but <laughs> uh, these are very uh, recent uh, newspaper headlines. So I think it's from like weeks ago. Uh, it seems that investors are confident that they learned from that experience and they're now ready to start investing again into, into this sector. Uh, and hopefully like knowing what, 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 uh, what to do right now. Um, so I, I really believe that this is um, an important um, topic to, to look into. Okay, just uh, let me mention the, the, the contribution to the literature. Um, so this paper is at the intersection of two streams of literature. On one side, there's the literature on climate finance. And I think that the contribution of the paper to that literature is uh, documenting what's happening in private markets. So you know that for public markets, um, I mean, we know more than we know for private markets, part, partly because we don't have uh, data for for private firms. So we do have like ESG ratings, CO2 emissions and other data for public firms. It's more difficult to understand uh, green firms in the private uh, in the private market. Um, so I, I think in this sense that this is the contribution of the paper. Uh, and for what concerns the literature on entrepreneurship and, and innovation, um, I think it contributes to the stream of literature that look at the impact of venture capital financing on entrepreneurial activity. And I, I hope I can bring like some more insights on the financing of VC of certain technology, technology cycles. So the, the, my, my data set is formed by two different uh, data sources. So on one side, I have the database of patents, and this is on the other side I have the the data set from uh, venture of venture capital financing and startups. So data from of patents are uh, come from the U.S. PTO patent office. So we look at U.S. data, and these are patents that are granted between 1980 and 2019, 2020. Uh, the the initial data set includes more than six million utility patents. And of these 6 million utility patents, 6%, or roughly 6% are green. So almost 400,000 patents are categorized as green. Um, and then I, I have patents that are backed by, by venture capitalists. So these are patents that are issued by US startups that are receiving VC financing from uh, US venture capitalists at the time of the patent application. These patents are almost 400,000, and of these, almost 20,000 are green. So of course, the market of uh, venture capital is smaller. Uh, I'll show you later some statistics. Uh, the biggest uh, bunch of, of patents is from uh, listed firms. But I will show you that VCs are, are particularly good at financing uh, innovations that is quite uh, relevant. So green patents are uh, identified using a classification system. It's called the cooperative uh, patent classification, which is provided by the USPTO, so the US Patent Office. Um, so basically, since 2013, uh, the USPTO, but also the, the European Patent Office, so if you want to research on that, the data is available uh, from, for different states, uh, added an additional category for, for each patent uh, that tags those technologies uh, that um, help uh, mitigating or adaptate, adapting against uh, climate change. So this is uh, different from the typical technology uh, categories we have, because it's a, it's a, a technology that that spans between different technology classes. And it's an additional one. So we are still able, I'm still able to control for the main technology class of a patent. 
even like when including this, uh, this classification. So this is to, to give you an idea of the, the content of these green patents. Uh, I divided, the, these are word clouds from the, of green patent titles. Uh, I divided the sample, the, the, the one on top is until the, the 1999 and the other one is the last uh, 2018 years. So we do see already from here that there's like uh, a change from what was um, the, the, so in the first part of the sample, we probably have like more innovation around uh, nuclear energy. Uh, and in the last part of the sample, there is this tilt toward renewable energy that is reflected already by, by these green patents uh, titles. Okay, for what concerns the data on startups and venture capital. So the data are from SDC uh, Venture Expert. This is a database that is uh, widely used in the literature. It has uh, pretty good coverage of, of startups and VCs. Um, this sample includes US-based startups backed by US venture capitalists the, with a founding date and investment date that go uh, from 1980 to 2020. Okay, so the, um, these two data sets are matched um, using name matching. There are no identifiers for, for startups, uh, um, unfortunately. And the final sample includes almost 10,000 startups and almost 7,000 US venture capital funds. So now green startups are defined looking at their, their patent portfolio. So I, I take their patent portfolio and identify the startups that are green if they have at least one third of their patent portfolio tagged as green innovation. Do, according to, to this classification in the sample, uh, there are 584 startups that are defined as green. I then uh, do identify uh, funds that are more specialized in clean tech uh, based on the share of their green patents within each industry they invest in, and then looking at the relevance of that industry in their overall portfolio. And I also identify a smaller group of ESG funds according to, to their name. So uh, I look at funds that contain words like green, renewable, uh, clean energy in their fund name. And following this classification, I identify only 64 funds uh, that can be identified as green based on their name. So I know this is, uh, I recently uh, read a paper that identified uh, a little more than a hundred uh, looking at name and, uh, and um, prospect prospectuses. Um, but in this case, I also need, it, need these funds to be investing in startups related to this innovation. And I focus on the name uh, more uh, related to, to green uh, energy and clean tech rather than impact uh, in general. So I will uh, then use uh, four different measures of innovation, of patent quality and what I call innovativeness. So I try to, um, you know, empirically, it's always difficult to, to assess uh, the quality of innovation. Uh, we use measures that are, that can be good proxies um, and they're proxy usually of how relevant an innovation is. So this is the case in particular for the citations that a patent receives. And then there are other measures that can be indicative of, um, of how much a patent relies on science, how much innovativity is because it breaks, uh, it makes a breaks with the, with past innovations. So the four measures that I chose are uh, forward citations. So as I said, these are the number of citations received by a patent from forward patents. Okay, this is like probably the most common used measure uh, in the literature. And I fixed the horizon within five years since the patent issuance. Okay, this is for comparability of patents that are uh, issued at different time periods. A second measure that I use is uh, backward scientific citations. For backward, I mean uh, citations that the patent makes 
to work that the patent used in, uh, in the creation of, of an invention. Okay, so this data is available uh, thanks to, to the recent work of uh, Matt and Fuji, uh, which is called Reliance on Science, where they use uh, text analytics uh, to identify uh, citations that a patent makes to scientific articles. So I think this is a very, very cool data set that they create. Uh, and it's, it's great to see um, not only like how which patents a patent cites, but also which scientific articles a patent uh, cites. I will then uh, use two further measures, and these are um, measures from Funk and Owen Smith uh, paper, where they uh, they basically they, they measure the extent to which a new invention consolidates or destabilizes. Uh, existing technology streams. So uh, they have this index, uh, there are like two, uh, two indexes that characterize how future inventions make use of technological predecessors cited by a focal patent. So uh, you will see two indices in, the, in my analysis. So one is referred to as destabilizing. And I think the figure probably explains it better than I can do in words. Uh, the intuition behind uh, destabilizing invention is that the citations to predecessors should decrease after uh, a destabilizing invention is introduced because the technology entails a break. At the same time, there's a, there, a, a relevant patent can be uh, consolidating existing technology, still be very influent, uh, very high quality, but rather than destabilizing the market, consolidating it. Uh, so consolidating inventions should be cited, uh, this is the, the intuition behind the measure, together with their predecessors and therefore increase citations of technology on which they build. Okay, if there are no questions so far, very fine question. I can, okay, I will continue. So, okay, these are some descriptive statistics at the patent level. Uh, on the first table, you have an idea of the frequency of different types of patents. So uh, I will make like, um, I will show you a couple of results at the patent level, and then I will move to the startup level. So as you, you can see, there are 6% uh, of the patents are categorized as green, 6% uh, are backed by venture capitalists, the majority of them are issued by listed firms, and then I will look at patents that are issued during the 2005-2011, which I will refer to as the clean tech bubble. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the measures that I just described, so uh, you see uh, the observations uh, change. This is because the measures are not available for the overall sample. Um, and well, we have an idea of the, um, of the average uh, forward citations that a patent receives. So a patent receives on average four citations and it cites on average 13 articles, but of course this is, uh, some patents cite a lot of scientific articles and many patents cite uh, very few. And the index- uh, I have uh, a question. Yeah. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. So there are many other papers that look at how venture capital uh, impacts innovativeness uh, measured by patents, okay? Yes. So why is this special? And also, why do you start your sample in 1980? Are there many green patents uh, before 2005? Well, the, the, um, well there, there are. Uh, I will show you the trend. There are some. Uh, I, I start in 1980 because I think that it's better. Uh, since we have data on a longer timeline, I'm just using the timeline I can have access to. Um, and uh, for what concerns the, the first question, yes, I know there are papers that, uh, that are looking, that, that study that. Uh, in my case, it's, it will be more focused on, on clean tech, but I think it's still uh, important to highlight 
and to look at the role played by VC in general in the financing of green innovation, of, of innovation in, in general, actually. So, you know, for example, some of these measures are, are pretty recent. So there's existing work, uh, empirical identification of good quality innovation is not easy. So I think if we uh, use new measures, new way to, to understand uh, innovation quality and investigate this, I think it's still uh, important. Okay. Um, so, okay, so this is the, the timeline. Uh, this is the percentage of green patents that are issued uh, by VC uh, backed startups in the solid line and listed firms in the dashed line. So I highlighted in red um, what we can see are two recent trends. So the one I was referring to as the clean tech uh, that I mean, people refer to as the clean tech bubble. Uh, so you see that during that time, uh, really green patents issued by uh, venture capital backed uh, startups are increasing uh, more than they do for in relative terms than they do for listed firms. But after uh, that boom went bust, uh, the trend is somehow like changing. And it seems that uh, at least until 2018, uh, the, the production of green patents of green innovation by uh, VC backed startups uh, is decreasing and it's, it stays lower in relative terms with respect to uh, listed firms. So here are some characteristics of uh, uh, of green patterns. Sorry, so, I, I yes. have a question. Yes. So I wanted to know: Can you tell apart different green sectors in your data set? Because I guess uh, venture capitalists will maybe have uh, more impact on some sectors that are less capital intensive uh, than others, like food you know uh food sector i don't know agriculture yeah, yeah this or... is a good point um so in in my analysis i i will uh, always consider uh within in like industry fixed effects so to to be able to identify characteristics that are specific of some startups or some patents within the same industry uh, to, to avoid to have like just industry effects. Uh, in terms of uh, patents and sectors, I have to say there are like ma many startups that I identify as green in my sample are actually uh, innovating in the energy sector. Um, there are many green patents also backed by VC that are, in the, that are creating new biofuels uh, so I, I think the, the kind of sectors where uh, listed firms and VCs are both producing green innovation are not that different. Did that answer your question? Um, okay, uh, so this is a cross-sectional regression at the, at the patent level. Um, so where the dependent variable is a measure of patent quality. In this table, there are the first uh, two measures that I I'm described earlier. Um, and the independent variables are, are dummy that identify if the patent is green, uh, if it is issued during the clean tech bubble, and if it is issued by VC backed uh, startups. So I highlighted the, the first line where we can see that actually green patents. Uh, within a same, in, so this is at the at the patent level. So this is within a same technology class, and for technology class, I use the the categorization of the the NBR categorization, uh, which identifies around uh, twenty or thirty different technology classes. Um, so in the first line, uh, we can see that green patents are on average more cited. Um, and they also kind of rely a little more on, on, sci on science work. So I think it's interesting also to, uh, for the reasons I, I was mentioning earlier, to look at the VC-backed um, line, where it's 
pretty uh, evident that, as I was saying, venture capitalists are on average fi uh, producing financing uh, good uh, in innovations that is relevant, that has impact in terms of citation it receives and also that is more uh, probably uh, related to, to, to scientific work. So maybe it's more like what is called fundamental innovation or in the cross section. Um, so interesting to notice the, the, the second line, uh, these are all for all patents issued during that, uh, that period. Uh, I think it characterizes a period that was very uh, peculiar. So it's post.com post bubble, uh, where we see that there was like this shift toward more uh, science-based innovation. And uh, the, the lower citation uh, for that period is kind of in line with the, um, with the experimentation that kind of comes from, uh, from a hot market period. In this other table, uh, it's uh, constructed the same way. Excuse me, I just uh, tried to understand what you are comparing. Yeah. So, so here, first of all, your firms are not all flagged as green startups, right? This is at the patent level. This is, okay. Yes. This is I at will... the patent and you have green and non-green patents. Yes. So you are yes. comparing the quality of green patents and non-green patents. Within uh, the same technology class. Within the same sector. Yes. Okay, so how do you explain that uh, green patents are more innovative? I, yeah, that, that, that's a good point. Um, I don't have a, a clear answer for that. Um, I think, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I should, I should, uh, I should think about it more. Um, but uh, it's probably because of the, well, maybe the, the, the fact that it's cited more, uh, probably it, it could be that there are like uh, less innovations, but those that are there are more uh, influent. And so they're more cited while in general for other uh, types of innovation, you just have more innovations. Uh, it could be that because of the type of, uh, of challenge they are face that they are trying to to solve they need to rely more on on science um yeah i don't think there are like just okay one good answer. Yeah. so so now we are trying to i mean what i guess we are interested in is seeing whether venture capitalists have a positive impact on the quality of innovation of green firms okay Yes. So, so here, what you don't capture this. You just show that, in general, VC has a positive effect on the quality yes. of innovation, whatever the sector. So you That's need right. really to compare. I mean, yeah. Or I mean, you interact green with VC. I don't yeah. know. No, there is, there is. It's just that it, it doesn't, I mean, uh, these are the data, so I cannot really uh, change them. I, I do interact the. the the green patents with the VC back and the green with the VC and uh, the, the, the clean tech period, which you see below. And at the patent level, uh, well, you... it's not significant. Yes, exactly. It's not significant. So, so yeah. maybe you need to get rid of everything that's not green and just compare what's comparable, you know? That, I mean... that could. <laughs> yeah. You, you see what I mean? Yeah. I don't. I don't see what purpose you have of including non-green firms in this sample. I. I think. Uh, yeah. I mean. I think this is probably something that comes up uh, better um, later when I move to the startup level, and then I compare startups, and then there is something that 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 can be said on that. Okay. Um, Let's move on then. Okay. Um, um sorry so, may yes or can you hear me yes. um yeah i think yeah really interesting um so maybe i mean because one column that you don't have here is the interaction of uh green and vc back without uh also having the interaction on the um boom period right 
So maybe like in yeah, between yes. column two it's and three, uh, like yeah. if you could try whether you see you uh, find something it's, there. There should be green I interacted with VC back, but not in that period. It's the just the one on top of the the triple interaction. Ah, okay, but I'm here without controlling uh, controlling an addition also for the triple interaction. I mean that's ah, okay, a different okay, type okay. of regression, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I um, because what I mean, you mean, yeah, I mean that could be interesting to see. I mean, without the boom and bust story, whether you have an effect there, and then yes. because in general, I think it's not a bad idea to have a green and VC backed and non-green and VC backed because then, I mean, otherwise you're just if you're only looking in the green space, VC backed versus non-VC backed, you don't have the control group of non-green and uh, VC backed. That's why I think in general it's uh, not a not a bad idea to have also non green uh, patterns in there. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. I can do that. Thank you. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And so this is for what concerns the measure on um, that I explained before, or uh, that explains how much uh, new uh, a patent is destabilizing uh, or consolidating. Uh, previous uh, innovations. So we see uh, green patents on average in the cross session tend to be more destabilizing within the industry. Again, we see that uh, VC backed innovation are more influenced both for what concerned being uh, more destabilizing and for what concerned being more consolidating. And I think it's interesting to uh, look at the last interaction I highlight. So patents that are, um, again, this measure is about patents that are cited together with the predecessor. So that these are patents that increase citations of technology on which they build. And, um, and it, there, it seems that VCs are, for what concerned the green innovations during that bubble are, uh, are issuing more of this innovation. And I think this uh, is somehow like confirmed also when we look at the startup level. Uh, so, okay, so let's move to the startup level. Uh, these are the, the descriptive statistics. I define, as I said, green startups as those that have at least 30% of uh, green patents in their patent portfolio. Uh, according to this classification, uh, we have uh, 568 uh, start startups. So the main uh, features, the main characteristics that distinguish green uh, and non-green startups, uh, I would say is that uh, they are more recent and you see that they're actually their founding year very much falls into the, 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 the beginning of this uh, boom cycle, uh, 2005, 2006, if we look at the median. Uh, they have on average longer exit horizons, uh, which is something, uh, which is an important point. And they, well, they tend to receive their first uh, financing a little bit later than other startups. Um, yeah, they also have smaller uh, patents portfolio. So this, yeah, this information, all this uh, is in the data set. You have this US venture yes. expert. Yes. Like yes. exit horizon and everything. The exit horizon is known by the venture capitalist? No. No, the, mm. sorry, the exit horizon, I, I compute it by, it's just the, the, the date at which the startup exits, either via uh, IPO, M&A, or, or because it, 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 uh, it fails, okay. uh, mi minus the, the funding uh, date of the, of the startup. So this is in, in years? Yes, eight, yes. Eight years? Yes, sorry, yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then you have the type of exit there. Yes, exit. exactly. Exit here, okay. And the citations are from the other data set. Okay. Exactly, that from these the are the, from, the, from the patents data set. And yeah. this is for the green startups and okay. No, actually for the green startups, it's longer. Yes, it's, it's longer. nine years. Yes. But not much longer, I'm surprised. No. Is not this much the case for all the sectors or only energy? 
I mean, uh, uh, I, I think it would be useful if you have like the standard deviation. So we see whether the average. Uh, yes. Know, yes. Okay. Yes. If you um, have lots of dispersion between sectors, okay. like between energy, food, agriculture, that would be interesting because I'm surprised there is not much difference between green and non green only one year yes uh i will i will look into that um but maybe i can uh, i can give you some more information with the with the next test the test so this is at the at the fund level as i said at the beginning so uh, there is like in this case um, the the central columns identify the funds that are more specialized in green innovations based on their patent portfolio. And uh, ESG funds are identified uh, what, depending on whether they include uh, words that are related to climate change or renewable energy or clean tech in their, in their title. So there are just very few of them. And in terms of funds, uh, there are really no main differences uh, between those that are main, more specialized, those that, are, that include ESG, uh, in the name with respect to, to other VC funds. So both in terms of size, yeah, of course, the, the one that include uh, ESG in the name uh, are um, more recent, uh, but, um, but there are no other like main differences in terms of size or uh, um, funding amount uh, or these kind of characteristics. Okay. So uh, I wanted to show you this graph, uh, which reports the total amount of uh, uh, VC funding uh, into, uh, well, so in the, with the solid line, there is the total amount of funding that goes into first round. So into startups that are receiving their first round of financing. Okay. And the dashed line is for startups, and here are only green startups, so only clean tech startups. Uh, the, on the dashed line, it's the amount that goes to follow on rounds. And so I think this um, pretty well identify the, the boom cycle uh, we were talking about. So we have 2006, 2007, a huge spike on uh, uh, that, uh, that characterizes the big amounts of funds toward first round investments. So these are more likely like very recent uh, startups because they were receiving their first round of financing at the time, uh, as well as uh, a big amount of funds that goes also to startups that were receiving already follow on funds. So startups that were uh, later on in, the, in their developing stage. And then this is pretty much after the, the boom went fast. Uh, the first uh, impact is on first rounds of financing. So uh, something uh, goes wrong, VCs are not happy with their investments, they step back from clean tech. And what you have is that if they have to keep investing in clean tech, they would do that on follow on rounds rather than investing in new companies. Okay. Uh, I point also to this, which I think it's a, it's a positive uh, signal. It seems that uh, especially in terms of new uh, financing to first rounds so to new startups, uh, there is an increase uh, in, uh, again, in recent years. Okay, so in this table, uh, this is a cross-sectional regression at the startup and fund level. So uh, in this case, the, the, the dependent variable is, is one if the startup fails during the sample period, okay. And um, again, this is at the, within industry. So with industry fixed effects, what we can see is that green startups are not overall like more likely to fail. Uh, same for, for startups that are funded during the, the 2005-2011 period. But when we look at green startups that receive their first round of financing, so really like these startups financed uh, here, uh, they were more likely to, to fail. Um, 
For what uh, other uh, results, uh, if we look at the interaction of green startups and those funds that uh, are- uh, Excuse me, yes. so I just had a question. So I give my name because someone asked that we give her name. I'm Warda Merouche. And so this is 0.05% more probability of failing, is that? Or 5% I mean, more I think it's 5.5% more probably okay uh, and then what is the average is that uh, economically significant the average probability the, well i have the the average failure rate is four percent four to seven percent so that's very high then yes i i mean i i'm not sure it's surprising though uh, because if you think that these are really like those uh startups that i I'm sure that you know if you look at the at the same uh, analysis uh, at the beginning of the dot com uh, and you do that for the dot com bubble and you take firms that were first financed in the middle of the dot com bubble probably there is a higher probability of failure for these firms. Um, it's not necessarily I think a, a bad thing. I will I will tell something more on that later, but. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think it's okay if they fail, but why is this so high? That's the question. Well, why I, are I, they, so were they, how do you explain that? I think it, it reflects a bit the the IE, like the, 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 the idea of the of the bubble uh, that didn't work in the end and the, this boom that went past. So uh, probably at the beginning of the boom, you have uh, huge capital inflows you have more firms that start um, inventing and uh, that start uh, being present in this type of business. And so as a financier, you're financing uh, both like very good firms and you also, you're also financing bad firms uh, just because you're pouring more capital into this sector more, um, which I think for the startups is, is good actually because it leads to more like experimentation and actually to more uh, innovation overall in one sector. But it turns out that it could be uh, that uh, that some of these firms are more likely to fail. So because oh, you I mean, mean it's maybe a knowledge of the fund. Because then if you interact with ESG fund, they seem to know more about that sector and the probability, the interaction is much lower. So it's interesting uh, maybe yes. to, to, to make the point that different funds have different expertise in, this, in the sector and then those that have more expertise, they have faced less failures. Uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm trying to investigate uh, a bit more on that. Yes, I, I agree that uh, it, it might be interesting to to have a deeper understanding of the role of fund specialization into, into this. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so I think, yeah, I should be fine with time. Uh, I'm almost there. Uh, so this is the um, cross-sectional regression that look at where the dependent variable is the exit, the log of the exit horizon, uh, which I explained earlier as I, as I computed as the exit time minus the founding time of the startup. So we do see that uh, green startups have longer in average uh, exit horizons. Uh, and this I think is in line with the, with the question I had earlier. Uh, even if on average, it didn't seem uh, much longer when you put it in a regression setting with, uh, with fixed effects, then it, uh, it, it seems much, it is that it is longer. Um, and of course, um, when I interact, I want to interact this, uh, the failure of startups uh, and the failure of green startups. And we do see that um, those startups that fail uh, more are the ones that report like that have, uh, they also have shorter horizons. And I mean shorter even with respect to other startups that fail. Um, so I think this I, I is- would Sorry, yes. sorry for interrupting. No, no, go ahead. I would exclude failing from exit or right. You, you see, failing is like something particular. 
it would be interesting yes. to see you see what i mean yes yes i agree with that i mean it's, yes it, it impacts directly the, the the horizon itself so yes uh, maybe we do it like that so we yes. finish everyone um uh, we will take questions if you when you're finished because it's only I think two slides and then we have longer time yes. for detailed questions. I think that's a good idea for everyone. Perfect. Uh, thanks. So this is the last table and then I will uh, just go to conclusion. Um, okay, so this is similar to the analysis that I did at the patent level, but this is at the startup level. Okay, so the first three columns look at the citations that the green startup that the, that the startup receives, and the last columns they look at citation that the startup makes to scientific articles. And um, so inter it's interesting, I think, to to look at uh, green startups that were founded in during the the clean tech bubble, and we see that they are uh, on average much more cited than other uh, startups in the same industry and then other green startups. And I think this goes in line with the, what I was uh, mentioning before, this idea that in these periods of hot markets, you have more capital, you have more experimentation, you might have more failure as we saw, but also you can end up having more innovations that in the end, uh, that in the end we can use to build new innovation on. Um, so, the interaction again with the ESG, with the funds with an ESG name, doesn't seem to, to, to go in the direction of ESG funds being better at financing this innovation. Um, it could be because they're more recent. Uh, again, there are a few funds identified like this, but it's true that if we look at those identified as specialized in green, there's not much there uh, either. So this is something probably to, to where I should, um, to, to have a deeper look into. Um, of course, like the last two lines are for controls, uh, but yes, I would stress this, the fact that uh, green startups that were founded, uh, that received financing during the, the bubble are actually producing innovations that is, that is good. And so to conclude, um, to sum up, I started by saying that venture capitalists play a main role in the financing of uh, relevant innovations. Uh, and I also showed that patents that are backed by VC, but this is also uh, in the literature, are on average more innovative and cited. Uh, then uh, we talked about how starting from 2005, with increasing oil prices, climate change awareness that increased, uh, venture capitalists started to invest large amounts of capital into clean tech, and I said, there might reason to, to, to believe that clean tech startups have different characteristics than other startups. And some of these characteristics like longer horizons or uh, larger capital in order to scale up can create frictions uh, in the successful financing from, from venture capitalists. Yet what, I, what I, I hope it's probably one of the main takeaways of this analysis is we see that large amount of financing during this boom also led to the creation of, uh, of companies that are actually being largely cited by forward inventions. So it somehow kind of confirmed that uh, experimentations that characterizes hot markets is important, uh, even if it entails more, more failures. So I, I think for the success of, of uh, future investments in the, in the sector in clean tech, uh, it's important to really understand the existing frictions and understanding whether these frictions can actually be overcome by venture capitalists that can adapt their business models, uh, such as their standard uh, investing horizons and their, their uh, average amount of capital invested, or whether we will need like interventions from, from other players such as governments to, to step in and help the, uh, the increase of this kind of innovation. So, Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Really interesting presentation and already a lot of discussions and um, interesting insights. Um, so I think we open up the floor for further comments and discussions and questions. So feel free to unmute yourself or also uh, turn on your camera and ask some questions.
Okay, I don't want to monopolize, but since there are no questions, I, I had a, you know, I, I don't know this sector very well, so maybe you can explain me. Um, so these venture capitalists, they are funds that, so do they close after a project? Yes. Or do they, they close after a project? So, well, usually, well, they have multiple projects. So they usually have, there's a, uh, there's a firm and then this firm uh, um, opens different funds that get financing from what is called uh, limited partners and the VCs uh, act as general partners. Uh, so they are the one deciding on working to invest. Uh, they are the one talking and discussing with startups. They um, very often like play in syndicates. So we together with other funds and usually there is one lead fund that uh, that go that, that direct negotiations and talk with uh, with startups and yeah okay so over time you cannot see whether the same people are investing in that sector i think at the at the firm level uh, yes i could i could see that uh, i mean probably also for 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 some funds that are still open and follow follow other uh, other projects at the same time I see. The, okay uh, i see so this is something actually uh, that's a, a good point it's actually important uh, to uh, at some point lead lead the the analysis also at the firm level where for firm i mean this firm that uh, that manages different funds Okay. Ah, okay. I see what you mean. The firm is like uh, on at the top of different funds. Yes. It manages different funds. Yeah, it's like a family. It's like a like a, I can I cannot get the, yeah, the yeah. how you call and it. And then you have managers. You identify the managers and all of that. Uh, you mean like. The, the the people working in the fund or the the, the... yes uh, i don't we don't I... see the people who manage the firms and the funds uh i should check that i'm not sure i'm not sure okay venture so venture expert is the best database for this stuff uh at... I, I'm what not about taking and all that stuff? For what I know, well, this is first. Of all, this is the one that I had available, so <laughs> I'm using this. But okay. it's pretty. It, now, this is a, uh, jokes aside. It's pretty good. It, um, I know there's a like it has a very good coverage. So for, for what I know, in terms of coverage, it's probably uh, the best. In terms of data quality and kind of data that you can have, I know that PitchBook might be better. Uh, because yeah, I've they're... been using PitchBook actually. And I might be starting working on this topic, you know, a green tech topic. So maybe I'll contact you someday if, sure. if you are interested. Okay. I'm happy to, to talk more about that, sure. Okay, thank you. It was very interesting. Thank you very much for the questions. Yeah, Sylvia, Julian here. Yes, um, hi. A, a question I had, you know, are you making causal statements in, in your analysis or, or, or are you, you know, carefully staying a little bit at the descriptive level? Um, no, for now I'm not. Uh, for now I'm at the descriptive level, definitely. Because you said one thing that, so that's good, I think. <laughs> so be, to be careful there, but I, you know, one thing that you said, or, or that also Warda was saying, you know, maybe the ESG funds are better at identifying the companies that don't fail, right? Yeah, that could be one thing. The other thing could be, well, you know, due to the support of ESG funds, they didn't fail, you know, they, so, so that's, I think, uh, I mean, that's very difficult to tell apart, of course, but that would be super interesting. And that would, you know, you set this up a little bit when you mentioned um, Ludwig Fallopius, uh, like quadrant there, where you say, you know, this is where you can actually have impact as a venture, in, venture capitalist. Um, 
you know, I, I'm just thinking whether, you know, you can find some sort of natural experiment where a fund couldn't invest somewhere where they would have liked to for, you know, it's the wrong country. It's, you know, something like that would be super exciting. Yes, I I agree. That's a great comment. I agree with you. Um, I was a bit like blocked into do this because when I how I categorize the when I look at funds that were identified as uh, green according to their names, I didn't see much. Um, and in terms really of observation, so I'm always a bit uh, scared in this. With this data, you you don't really have uh, a lot of uh, observations different cases possibilities so it's a bit maybe harder to to find experiments but i agree that uh, it, it would be very like interesting to 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 see what happens when like a fund that is uh, more specialized or more into clean tech jumps in and start investing in that uh, i think i can i can try to to do something on that and um yeah i i will think more and look at the data more in the next months to see what I can, what can come out from that. Yeah, thanks. Great, I think we are at the top of the hour for the official part of the seminar. So thank you very much, Silvia, for your presentation you. and your yeah, explanations. Really interesting. Also, thank you for participating, everyone. Uh, next week, we have Lars Horner from the University of Bremen, and he's um, going to present a more experimental paper uh, that you can find on our website. So we're looking forward to, to see you there as well. And otherwise, you can also stay longer in the call. We have a little bit uh, more time to take more questions, but we will stop the recording now. And um, yeah, otherwise, if you have to go, um, I wish you a nice evening or a nice day wherever you are.